you've ever dreamed of owning a Porsche, it's nice to know that some dreams come true faster than others. All right, today we're back out here working on this red 924S. There are a lot of things that I still need to do. So we're gonna pick up where I left off last time and I just got the engine back together and we were gonna take it for a test drive. I took it out for a test drive and I'm getting ready to go back home. No vacuum leaks whatsoever, so the idle is perfect. Snappy throttle. No longer wants to die when you let the throttle off. And you can see temperature is perfect. And also the oil pressure is good. As I get to driving, you'll see it go up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive here. took this car out on its first test drive yesterday and it did great I don't see any leaks unfortunately whenever I was sitting in traffic I had to keep switching on the air conditioner to make the fans run because I don't think the thermo fan switch is good after all so I have a few of them here that I'm gonna swap in out of some spare cars and we'll give that a shot and if I have time I'm gonna try and install these rear speakers here so all right, I have the thermo fan switch out now, and as you can see, there's a bunch of corrosion on here. And you can see that this one is a waller. If you're wondering where it's located, then you'll find it just below this pipe here on the left side of the radiator. You can see that I have the pipe pulled back for a little bit better access. And I'll show you over here on one of these spare radiators. You can see the pipe here, and you can see the thermo fan switch here. All right, here's the one I'm gonna put in. Well, I'm planning to put in. I actually have two of these, and before I put them back in, I'm going to actually make sure that they work because I don't wanna do this twice because whenever you remove this, you're going to be dumping all the coolant out of the radiator. That's why I went ahead and pulled that pipe there. So I dumped all that fresh coolant out that I had already just put in there yesterday, and I don't feel like doing this a third time, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and test this first. So all right, I tested three of these switches and they were all good, including this one here that came out of the car. Perhaps that corrosion was making it come on later or perhaps the gauge in the car is a little bit off and I just didn't let it idle long enough. Either way, I'm not sure why it wasn't coming on, but it should now and at least I know that the switch that I'm going to be putting in there will work. 
Alright, last night I replaced the thermo fan switch. Today I'm going to be filling the coolant and getting the air box back in. After that, I still have a pretty long list of things to do. I need to charge the AC, replace some of these lug nuts that don't match, get the headlights working, fix the sunroof, and replace the fuel pump and the fuel filter, and then install the rear speakers. I wasn't originally going to replace this air box with the broken bolt, but since I had to take it out again, I thought I'd go ahead and replace it with this good used one over here. Alright, so I replaced the old air box with that broken bolt, and this looks much better. Alright, now that that's back together, I'm going to install the rear speakers. And I noticed this handle on the seat was missing. Luckily, I have one right here. So I'm going to install it. And now I can put the seat up. All right, as you may know, the fabric on this panel here actually goes underneath this rubber on the glass here. So the first thing I need to do is remove this glass. I've heard people suggest cutting this before to make this installation a little bit easier, but I actually have a car at the shop where someone's done that, and I'll show you what that looks like. As you can see, once it gets wet or anything inside the interior, then this panel will just pull away and you can see how it's rotted. So, all right, I have these windows out and the panels pulled. Here's the speakers. You can see that these are the factory four by sixes and you can hear that they aren't working. I have the radio on and what you're hearing is the front speakers, but nothing's coming out of these here and they'll just go in the trash. As you can also see, there was a factory option for a six inch speaker, but it's rare to find that. But anyway, I'm gonna get these swapped out and get the new speakers in. speakers are in and they're working beautifully. All right, after getting these windows and the panel in, it rained the rest of the night, so I didn't get to work on the sunroof any. I'll go ahead and show you the panels here. I replaced any missing screws and any of these missing caps here. And today I'm going to be working on the sunroof here. You can see someone's already cut this back and replaced the gears at some time. They've also let the screw out, so I'll try and find the replacement screw. I have another panel that's gonna go up here. Unfortunately, I don't have another headliner, but this would be covered up here. And the panel that I have isn't great, but it's better than the one that was in here. It was in really rough shape. But anyway, I'm gonna remove this here, and then I'm gonna adjust these arms, 
and get the sunroof functioning properly. All right, so when adjusting the sunroof, you want to set your limit switches to about right here on the track. They slide back and forth. And you'll want to put them about maybe a couple of millimeters from the right side and then lock them down. And before, what would happen was whenever I would raise the roof, then it would go up and then the arms would come all the way back and retract all the way to about right there before the limit switch caught it. That means when they put these arms in, they didn't do it right. So I removed this cover and you can see I just have two screws in there right now just to test it. And this is where once you have the sunroof and its limit switch stopping it, you want to set the arms in there to about this position right here. And now watch what happens. So I'm going to raise the roof now. So it goes all the way up. And then when it comes down, the limit switch is going to stop it in that position from now on. Now when I put the key into the off position, you'll see the arms retract as they should. I haven't set the slip clutch, so I'm being careful here. But once I set the slip clutch, then the sunroof will function perfectly. You can see how the arms are tracked, and then they go back to where they should. And then when I turn the key into the ACC position, then see the roof raises. And then the limit switch stops it right there where it should. All right, the sunroof is working as it should now and I've got these covers back on. I pulled a screw out of the parts car and replaced that one that was missing here. So now I can put the cover on and then I'll adjust the slip clutch in the back and the sunroof will be perfect. So all right, as I mentioned, what I did was I set the limit switch in the rear and then I installed the arms with the sunroof in in the same spots. This is gonna guarantee that the sunroof doesn't raise unevenly now that it's working perfectly the next thing i need to do is set the slip clutch so let me go back here and show you guys how to do that so basically this here is your slip clutch you're going to have two nuts on it i've already removed one and then you're going to try and loosen this all the way up and what you'll want to do is try and raise the roof. Don't retract the arms, but try and raise the roof. And with it fully loose, the roof should not go up. It should slip. So you'll want to tighten this up just a bit until the roof starts lifting. And the way I have it now is that the roof will go up, but if I put my hand on it, then it won't. It'll actually start slipping. So at this point, what you'll do is you'll actually give it about another quarter turn and your slip clutch will be set perfectly. Then you'll put your other nut on with some Loctite and then lock it down against that. Don't tighten this one anymore. You'll just lock that other, other nut down and that'll keep it from ever coming loose. So as I mentioned, the slip clutch will raise the roof, but if I were to just put something on it, it will not raise it at all. The clutch will just slip. So what I'm gonna do is turn that nut about another quarter turn and it should be set perfectly. So all right, I gave that nut another quarter turn and as you can see, the arms retract perfectly without stripping the gear. You can still hear the motor running, so it's working perfectly. But unfortunately, whenever I went to put the arms back in that position, they didn't wanna go, so I had to give it another quarter turn. So be prepared if you have to make any adjustments. You don't want to turn it too much because of course you don't want to strip the gears when you do this. So just be easy and take your time. So anyway, I gave it another quarter turn and the roof is working perfectly now. So I went ahead and put Loctite on the second nut and locked it down. So let me show you. We have a roof that goes all the way up until the limit switch stops it and then comes all the way down until the other limit switch stops it. And when I put the key in this position here, we have a roof that retracts and the slip clutch works exactly the way it should and then goes back into position like this. So everything's working perfectly. Everything is locked down now. And so this sunroof is ready to go. 
So all right, while I didn't change the sunroof gears on this car, I did all the same work. I pulled the arms out. The only thing that I didn't do was pull the gears, but I did everything in the exact same steps. I adjusted the switches here and I adjusted the slip clutch so that way it won't strip the gears. I even adjusted the arms to be in the proper position. So pretty much everything to replace the gears was done here. So now this sunroof works perfectly. I'm gonna put the cover back over this and we'll put some new clips in this carpet here and that'll be it. So all right, I got everything back together now. I meant to mention that there is a cover that goes over the slip clutch and then I put the cover back over the sunroof motor. None of the screws or clips were with this car when I got it, so I just used some from a parts car. And as for these clips here, what I used was these from Advance Auto. There's about five in this pack, and it cost about four bucks, and honestly, I don't think they look too bad. Sorry, I got the sunroof working perfectly and all the trim reinstalled. I've been working on the headlights, trying to get them to work. I started out taking all the switches out of this car and my parts car and just testing them in my car to see if there was something wrong with the switch and they all passed so then I started looking at the stalk there where the high beam and low switch is and I went ahead and jumpered the wires and tested them with my multimeter. Everything was working perfectly so whenever I would jump the high beams or the low beams they all worked right so there was nothing wrong with my harness and I went to go get a spare stalk and I didn't have one so I ended up having to rebuild the one that's in the car so basically I took the terminals out I cleaned all the corrosion off of them and then I re-greased everything and now everything is working perfectly so you can see here the high beams come on and the low beams come on so everything is working perfectly and it was just due to some corrosion inside here. Alright, last night I got the headlights working and today I'm going to take the car and get the oil changed and flush the fluids. Alright, got it here and get the oil changed today. flushing the automatic transmission system here so I'm going to go ahead and start it up. PSI of the transmission there, 14 PSI, it's about normal. push new ATF through the system and catch every all the dirty nasty that comes out it'll fill up the tank you'll be able to see the tank fill up here in a minute once it gets above the level there so it's taking the old fluid out and bringing the new fluid in yep yep it's forcing the new in and catching the old we'll run about 16 quarts through today Something that I would definitely not want to do at home. Alright, I'm letting the car idle as we're swapping out the fluid. I thought we'd take a look in here. You can see temperature gauge looks great. Idle looks great. This car just fires right out and out. And you can see that the oil pressure looks good. It's got brand new oil in it. Yeah. Alright, we got the automatic transmission fluid drained and flushed now. Here is what came out. That bad, but see it is a little dark. Alright, so here I am under the front. We got fresh oil. Here 
fresh oil in it, and we just finished flushing the automatic transmission fluid. The fans are now working, and we had to let it idle during the flush. The fans came on and worked as they should, so I'm happy about that. Sorry, we flushed the automatic transmission fluid, and now we're going to be checking the diff fluid. You'll find the plug here on the rear driver's side. We're going to be pumping it out and replacing it. Drain plug on the automatic bars. I said it was full, cool, and it still was honey colored, but we're going to change it anyway. Had to get the old dip fluid sucked out, and he's now filling it with 8090. Alright, all filled up now, and he's just putting the plug back in. Using the little wrench. Yeah, that's a little rich. <laughs> a little rich. All right, we got all the fluids changed. So the temperature is good. The fans are running now. So the oil pressure is fantastic. I've even got the steering wheel centered. And I'm just cruising down the highway. The transmission feels great as well. All right, I just got back from having the fluids changed. And now I'm going to be changing the fuel pump and the fuel filter. So I've got the car jacked up. I just thought I'd let you see what we've got going on underneath here. And so we have the fuel pump here and this hose here is really cracked up. And you can see here that it's weeping fuel a little bit. It's wet around in this area. So I'm going to have to replace that, which won't be fun since there's a full tank of fuel. And then up here we have the fuel filter and it's just hanging out. And if you look right here on the fuel pump, you'll see someone's got some speaker wiring here. So I've got to clean all this up, change this hose as well, and then replace both the fuel filter and the fuel pump. All right, you can see that I have the fuel line disconnected from the pump now. And over here I have a clamp on it so that way I can modulate fuel flow into this tank here. Right now it's clamped down so there's nothing going in there. But once this gets full then I have another tank. And if both of those get full then I'll just dump this into my fuel tank. So now I have the clamp off and the tank is filling. Alright so I managed to extract all the fuel and I have the hose off now and have this hose here going back on to replace it. All right, I have the old fuel pump out and the old fuel filter, so now I'm ready to install the new ones. So before I put the fuel pump back in, I thought I'd clean this wiring up. As you can see, this is the speaker wire someone had on here, along with the wire nuts. Well, I have all that off now, and I've got the wire cleaned up really nicely. So all right, I have the new hose in, the new fuel pump, I have the wire fixed up here, and I have the new fuel filter in. So the only thing left to do is to clean up and refill the tank. So all right, yesterday I had to dump all the fuel to replace the fuel filter, the fuel hose, and that hose that runs to the pump. And I thought while the tank is empty, it would be the perfect time to go ahead and clean the sender because I did notice as I was dumping the fuel that it was jumping around a little bit. All right, I have the fuel sender cleaned and it appears to be working perfectly now. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and start filling the tank. I've left the car jacked up so that way I can watch for any leaks. I'll also need to start it up and just make sure it doesn't leak under pressure. I put five gallons in here and then I started it up and everything still looks nice and dry except this one spot here 
and I did notice it was wet last night when I was draining the tank but so is everything else so I just chopped it up to that but I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on here can't see any scratches or dings or cracks in the tank at all so I'm just gonna have to keep an eye out for it you can see over here that everything looks good on this side it's just sort of wet right around in here and look it's already where I wiped it off Let's see right there while I wiped it off and it was dry it's puddling right there so there is a tiny pinhole right there it looks yep so I don't know what to do about that exactly so I'll tell the owner and I'll just try and see what I can do here since there is apparently a very tiny pinhole in here so this hasn't gone well at all I just wiped it off with the paper towel and it started pouring out right there so I guess I'm gonna end up dumping the tank again and trying to figure out a way to patch that or I'm gonna have to swap in another tank not exactly sure but you can see it's just pouring out of there now I didn't see any rust or anything in the tank and all I did was wipe it off with a paper towel and it started dribbling so I tried to stop it with my finger and that only made things worse so now here we are trying to catch all that fuel that I just put in there. Sorry I had the tank drained once again and I'm trying to clean up around the hole so that way I can get a good look at it. And keep in mind, I've done nothing but remove some of this undercarriage chip guard. So, you ready? That's how big the hole is. So, alright, I've got a fuel tank repair kit. And if this was caused by rust, then I want to remove as much material as possible. So that way, I can see if it can be repaired. Right now, I have no idea if it's even worth trying to fix. But... This entire area around here seems to be really strong. I'm not pushing through it. So, I wouldn't think that this was caused by something bumping up and going through it, but you never know. So, I just set the camera down and I started poking at this here, and sure enough, there's another big hole here, and you can just see the rust pouring out. So, this tank is really shot that just made a gigantic hole look at the rust coming out of there I'll bet this whole area here is just completely rusted out so yesterday I patched those pinholes in the gas tank using this here it's supposed to take 24 hours so I just let it sit overnight and hopefully this will be the only hack job I have to do on one of these cars. But later on maybe we'll discuss replacing this fuel tank. But hopefully this will work for now. But anyway, I've let this sit 24 hours now. And according to the package, you can sand this down to make it look a little bit nicer. So that may be what I do. But it doesn't look like you're going to get this off. And honestly, if the undercoating was kind of keeping it from leaking before, this should do the trick. But I'm not going to go gung-ho and just fill this tank back up. I'm going to try and take my time and just watch for any leaks. So I ended up sanding everything down and it was going pretty good, but I guess I didn't go thick enough right here. And you can see I'm starting to leak again, so I've got to get that patched up. So all right, I've got it patched up now and I'm just gonna leave it looking like this. Once it cures 24 hours, I may put some paint over this metal here to keep it from rusting. But outside of that, I'm kind of glad I sanded it so that way I could find any weak spots because you don't want this busting whenever you try and fill the tank up or anything. And I really didn't sand it that much. So to find that was kind of a good thing. All right, I've got the tank filled now, and so far I don't see any leaks, so I'm going to go ahead and coat this so it won't rust, and then I'm going to take it for a test drive. All right, so I'm just test driving it after repairing the fuel tank. I put about seven gallons in here, and I'm just going to see how well that works out, and then I'll fill it the rest of the way up once I get back.
Alright guys, been cruising around in this car for a while now and it's no longer leaking fuel. I've got all the air out of the cooling system. Fuel pressure's looking good, steering wheel is centered. She's driving like a dream, so I'm thinking that she's just about ready to go home now. Alright, I just got back from a test drive and it was doing well. But you can see my little plug fell off there. I'm not sure it bonds to itself, I guess. And it's laying down here on the ground. I was pouring fuel a second ago. What I'm gonna have to do, I guess, is dump this tank one more time, scrape all that off, and try and plug it again. So last night I patched a fuel tank yet again, and hopefully the third time's the charm. The first time I tried this steel stick, and it didn't really work that well. I believe if I had used the instructions that had come with this kit, it would have worked perfectly, but I didn't really know what I was trying to do until I got this kit. You can see here, it says to turn it into a cone and then press it in. However, this is the second thing I used. It's this Permatex fuel tank repair and it says to apply it to even wet surfaces so that's what I did when I sprung the leak I actually just patched it with this here and then it says to let it cure for 24 hours and in some cases I let it cure longer because it was still really gooey this here is over 48 hours old and you can see just how flexible it is it never really got hard at all and once the fuel got on it then it just turn back in the goo so I don't recommend that whatsoever so last night I went and picked up this kit here and although it looks identical to the stuff that I used before it has different cure times and I had some left over so I thought I would take it in the house and see if it would get hard and it did it got rock hard so I'm hoping that this will actually work and this one came with instructions to sand the tank, which I'd already done. But it also told me to dump the fuel and make sure it was dry and then clean the area with alcohol, which I really hadn't done before because this one said you can apply it wet, so I didn't think much of it. But once you have it mixed up, you're supposed to make a little cone shape out of it and then insert it into the hole like that. So that's what I did with this. and. Since this has a different cure time of two hours instead of 24, I thought, well, this can't be the same stuff, so I'll go ahead and use it. And this actually turned hard, unlike this stuff here. So I'm thinking that it can't be the same thing. But I'll go up underneath here and show you the repair. As you can see here, that I did things a little bit differently this time. So I rolled it into a cone and inserted it into the holes and then flattened it down and it looks much better. And this is actually pretty hard and it stuck well to the tank, which is something the other stuff didn't do. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this. And like I said, hopefully the third time's the charm, but if this doesn't work, then I have another tank that I may put in here. So I'd have about five gallons in the tank and so far this is already looking like a much better repair than the other ones before. All right, this fuel tank repair is holding up pretty well. So earlier today I put a thick layer of undercoating on here and I'm just letting that dry. But anyway guys, that's just about gonna do it for this episode. There's still quite a bit to do on this car and we're gonna get into that next time. So all right guys, that was my first time patching a fuel tank and while it took me a few tries, I finally got the hang of it and I think it's gonna hold up well. If not, I have another tank I can put in later on. But anyway guys, just a reminder, don't put water in your gas tank, it will rust out. So anyway guys, next time we're gonna be trying to finish this car up so that way it can go home. And if you like the Porsche 924 and the 944 series, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs. I'm uploading videos every week, so be sure to stay tuned for the next one. And come join us on Facebook. I also have a group over there where you can show your projects. So, And I also want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them because trying to upload videos every week and buy parts and things like that can be really hard and very expensive so i want to thank you guys for that but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time